Today is April 1st, 2020, also known in many places around the world as April Fool's Day. My name is Matt Kloskowski, and in this video, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite Lightroom and Photoshop pranks that you can play on unsuspecting friends, family, coworkers, whoever it may be. And heck, it doesn't even have to be today. Any day is a good day for a prank. And I think in this in this time that we're all in right now, we could use a, uh, a good laugh and a good lighthearted look at some of this stuff. So, uh, oh, disclaimer, you will learn absolutely nothing useful about Lightroom or Photoshop in this tutorial. So please don't leave a comment that says you learn nothing useful. Although I bet you, you will learn some things in some convoluted way that might be useful one day. Let's take a look at my favorite one. And this is in Lightroom. So when you open up Lightroom, you're going to see a little uh, a little thing in the top left corner. It's called an identity plate, all right? If you go to your uh, your top menu here, I believe it's probably under the edit menu on a PC, you're going to see a thing here called identity plate setup. All right, so we can go inside of here, and that identity plate is going to default to, I believe, your Adobe ID. You can change it to just say the words Lightroom Classic, or you can change it to something personalized. And in this place, you can go in and you can use a graphical identity plate, which we're about to do, or you can use some of your own text. You can just put your own text up there. Some people put their name or uh, their name, the name of their photography studio or business, whatever it happens to be. All right, so let's cancel out of here. I have done the super duper heavy dandy research, and that was from Google, to find out the ideal size of an identity plate. So the ideal size is going to be... Uh, and I do about 300 pixels in width, but the the height is more important. I believe it's uh, 42 or 41 pixels on the Mac. It's not going to make a tremendous difference, but you can always uh, do a Google search. It's a little bit different for Mac and PC, but pretty close. I then went and opened up Lightroom and took a little screen capture of the top left corner, which again, if you're not sure how to do it, um, it it's one of those keyboard shortcuts that's ingrained. I don't even know what I press anymore, but... Uh, again, a quick Google search will get you to what a, a screenshot shortcut is. And so what I did is I pasted that screenshot into Photoshop so I could get colors. Well, I can I know the background is black. All right, so let's go over here and let's actually fill that background with black. And by the way, this is not a tutorial, so I'm going to go fairly fast in all this stuff. And then I used my eyedropper to go and grab the color of the text so that we could, we really want to make this look realistic. And then I zoomed way, way in, all right? And we're going to go in here and type in the word deleting all photos, all right? And that's a little too big, so we'll resize it down a bit. And give yourself a little breathing room on the left-hand side from what I found because it, uh, it does tuck it up against the end edge of Lightroom, so... Just give yourself a tiny bit of room there. Now, how did I find that font? Because if you use any font, that you're you're taking away some of the allure of, of being able to pull this off. Well, what I did is I also went into my screenshot and Photoshop and I went under the type menu. And I'm, of course, I'm using the latest Creative Cloud version, but I went down here to match font. And inside of match font, I dragged this little box around here and it came up with Myriad, all right? So you can ask Photoshop which font is being used in a graphic. So it came up with Myriad, which is how I came up with that. Now I'm gonna create myself a new layer and I'm gonna make a progress bar, like so, with the rectangular marquee tool. And then I'm gonna go edit stroke and I'm gonna stroke that with that same foreground color of about one pixel. And then I'm going to hold down my option or alt key to subtract from the selection and just subtract. Let the progress bar almost be done. Leave it about, you know, 80 percent, 80 percent done. And then I'm just going to fill that progress bar, the rest of it with gray. All right. So now it looks like it's almost done. And then we very simply go and onto our desktop or wherever and uh, ID plate prank or prank. I can't seem to sell prank. Change that here to JPEG, click on save, color space doesn't matter. Hop back over into Lightroom, go back under our identity plate setup, and now we change this to personalized. Use graphical, locate file, go find my file, and there you go. 
click OK. And now it says deleting all photos. So and it looks like it's almost done. Um, so there's a there, there's one for you. I will warn you ahead of time. If, if this is like a work prank where you're going to go to work, make sure, and, and most people aren't in an office right now, so it shouldn't be a big problem, but make sure make sure before the person like reinstalls their computer or spends two hours on the phone with Adobe that you, you tell them about the prank so you don't get fired. Next up, a really quick break in from our sponsor, which of course you guess is me. Um, depending on when you're watching this, we're, we're in some odd times right now where a lot of us are inside and most of us are, are staying inside, but I've got some temporary pricing. And if that's not for you, I've also got, uh, you can see here, I've also got some webinars that I'm doing just about every day to just help pass the time for me and for, for you guys. So you can check that out on the website. And if you're watching this at another time where we're hopefully we're back out about in the world. Uh, I just sure appreciate it if you swing by mattk.com and uh, check out my courses and my presets. All right, here's another one. This one's going to be in Photoshop. I'm just going to flip back and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop for this. Um, so let's make a new layer and I'll, I'll hide the original layer. So Photoshop uses this transparency. It's a little checkerboard grid. And that's how we know transparency in Photoshop. So anybody that's been using this for a while has become used to this little checkerboard. Well, let's come up here to our Photoshop preferences and we can go down here to transparency and gamut. And inside of this, what we can do is we can change. You'll see that you've got some options inside of this menu to change it, but I like to just go, I like to go big or go home and click on custom and then just change it all to black. There we go. Change it all to black. Now, if transparency is the only thing seen, it looks like it's black. But as soon as you show a photo, remember, it's transparent. It's just, this is Photoshop's way of showing you transparency. That's all you change. You change the checkerboard to just be black. So when you see a photo, you'll see that. But whenever you hide that or whenever somebody masks or anything, they're going to see black behind the photo. So there's another one for you. Okay, let's hop back over into Lightroom for the next one. Uh, so another one that you can do, and, and this, this, uh, this one is one I think best done. I don't know the best. Go, again, I would say go big or go home, but in some ways, if you do this one slowly and tastefully, you can have some fun too. If you right click on any panel over here inside of Photoshop, okay? Got a couple of things we can do here. But if you right click just in uh, next to the name of any panel, you will see here you can customize the develop panel or uh, just any panel. So you can go in here and you can turn them on and off. So what I would say is, you know, you really want to mess with somebody, turn them all off. But I think that also speaks to, you know, you can figure it out pretty quickly. But you can turn them all off or you can just turn like a, a, a pretty key panel off. And then you really want to mess with somebody, take like calibration, drag it to the top, take like lens corrections, drag it to the top, um, take uh, split toning, take all the, I, I was going to say useless. It's not that they're useless. It's just, I don't use them a lot, but take all the stuff that people don't use a lot and put them up toward the top and then put like basic and everything down here toward the bottom. And it's like, they're still there, but they're in the wrong order. Okay. And I think you might even, I, I click on the save here. Yeah. It says relaunch required. So I'll relaunch later. And of course it's going to mess it up on me, but, um, so that way you can go in there and reorder those panels or just make some of them disappear. All right. Here is another, uh, here's another really good one in Photoshop. I've actually got two really good ones coming out for you still. This one, again, this one I think is best done slowly. OK, it's it's done in little, little slow increments. Um, if you come under here into the edit menu, you there's several places you can really mess with somebody. Number one, you can go to keyboard shortcuts and you can take some favorite keyboard shortcuts, things, you know, everybody knows, like a save or a command or control J for duplicate layer B for like there's a lot of shortcuts that like people just become accustomed to. You can change those shortcuts inside of the menus here. So go in there and change a shortcut. Another thing you can do is you can go into the menus and you can hide, see the little eyeball icons here. So you can hide things. So again, you don't want to go, you don't want to go huge on this. 
I'd say just slowly hide little things, all right? What are things we all do in Photoshop? Well, we all go to save quite often. Uh, we probably go to close, um, go over here to some different menus here, go under the filter menu, um, go, you know, Gaussian blur, camera raw filter, sharpening filters, things that you know people use, go in there and hide them. Of course, you can go in and hide an entire menu item, but I'd say just, just go a little slower. And then here's one last one in, in, the same, uh, in the same place, toolbar. This can really mess with people. So you can hide tools. You can drag them over onto the right-hand side so they don't appear in the toolbar. But you want to know another one that you can really mess with people? That You can pull them out so they're not even in the same box. And you can change the order where, where I know the crop tool is always going to be up here. Drag the crop tool all the way to the bottom. Um, or, you know, again, tool groupings, you know, we always know the spot healing tools. These things are all grouped together. You can change the order of those or again, drag one out or just take one out all together, drag it over onto the right hand side. And it's really easy to come back in here and restore your defaults. All righty. Let's see here. Jump back over into Lightroom. So you see your modules up at the top here. Here's another one for you. Very simply right click and you can uncheck any module that's up here. So you can right click and you can uncheck it. And so things like, you know, web, hide web, but web is easy. Nobody uses the web module. So you really want to hide something that you know that they use, or again, go in there and hide everything and really make them wonder what happened. This next one in Photoshop, this one is diabolical. This one is this one will, will get you into a lot of trouble if you don't tell the person what you did, because they'll, they'll never find it. So when you come up here to the top file menu and you go down here to scripts, there's something in here called script events manager. All right. So the script events manager allows you to write scripts for Photoshop that do things upon certain events, saving, opening, closing, things like that. So first we enable events to run scripts actions. That's gotta be turned on. Then you choose the event. So you have a list here. New document, open, start, save, close, print, export. Huh, everything. Pretty cool. So we go in here and we choose everything. Now, I, I don't know how to write scripts, so this one is, is automatically um, gone from me. However, there are default scripts inside of here. So one of them is called welcome. So you can go in here and choose the welcome script, and it shows a simple alert when Photoshop starts. But you notice we told it to run and everything. So keep that in mind. The last thing we have to do here, it's not going to work unless you click add. And I always go in here and click done and forget to click add. So just heed that warning. You have to click add so it appears in here. Then you click done. Now, everything, anytime somebody does anything, if I press B for the brush tool, look at that. If I click on a layer, look at that. <laughs> If I, if I go up here to the menu and try to change opacity, ah, I guess opacity doesn't do it. Let's see if we change a blend mode. Now blend modes don't do it. I bet you if we go to a filter blur, Gaussian blur, it might, there we go. It, it, it's like, you can't even get out of it. It like comes up constantly. It gets so annoying to even go in and fix. Now I'm going to show you one last thing with this. And that is I created an action. All right. I created an action and we're going to go in here to my actions panel. So I went into my actions panel. I made an action. Oh God, I really got to turn this thing off first here. We're going to cancel out here. It's going to take me forever to get there. So let's go back to script, script event manager. Jesus. Um, remove all. There we go. Done. Okay. I created an action. Um, I just call it whatever, you know, best thing to do is call it something that somebody can't find, you know, like, um, resize photo, all right? Don't call it something obvious like prank. So we hit record and then we go into the actions panel menu and we choose insert stop, okay? Now I write in a message that says, Photoshop will press here. So what's gonna happen, it's gonna show a dialog box. It's gonna have two buttons in it, stop or continue. Photoshop, press stop, stop to delete 
this image, press continue to allow to close dialogue and allow Photoshop to continue deleting the image. <laughs> so it's basically do anything and we're going to delete this image. So you click okay. Now you stop recording that action. It's got one simple thing in it. There's nothing else in it. So we come back up here, we go file, we go into script events manager. Um, this time we change it to everything. Although you can change it to something like save. And that'd probably be a more, an easier one, right? When they go to save the document. So let's actually do that. Let's press save. Then we go over here to the actions and we got to go find that action. Uh, there we go. Resize photo. We got to add it into the script events manager. Click done. So now when I go in here and I hit save or save as, there we go. Oh, hold on. It's working in the, there we go. Press stop to delete this image. Press continue to close the dialogue and allow Photoshop to continue deleting the image. So again, make sure you go in there and turn these things off uh, or remove them because somebody will reinstall their whole computer before they figure that one out. All right, moving on down the line. So uh, another one that we can do here is in these last two ones are small, small changes. Again, these, these ones are, I think, smaller pranks is you can come in here to your identity plate setup inside of Lightroom, the place we were in the beginning. And you'll notice that you can change the font of everything that you see in the menus there. So that could be one thing is to change the font, but you want something even better change the font size and today change it to 18. Okay. Click. Okay. And you could see it changed it up there. In fact, I even think that's too far. Maybe put in like 21 or something like that. So it's just a little bit tomorrow. Come back, knock it down by a couple more. Come back after that, knock it down by a couple more after that every day. Keep knocking it down by a point or two until it gets really, really tiny on whoever you're doing this to. Again, it's that slow release of, of the prank that I think helps make it. So that's one. And then inside of Photoshop, there's something similar that we can do. We can go up here to Photoshop preferences. Uh, we can come up here to general. Here, I'm going to throw, give you two in this one. One of them beep when done. So when Photoshop finishes running things like filters and things, it'll beep. It's off by default. It should be off, but turn it back, turn it on. And, and again, it's one of those things people won't notice. It'll just be there and be like, huh, I don't remember that. But here's another one. If we go over here, continuing with that whole little font thing, um, if you go over here to your interface section under where it says presentation, see, it says UI font size. And I have mine set to large. Uh, I believe medium might be the, the default one. I forget, but I have mine set to large, change it to tiny. And it's, it's the name of the panels. It's the text in the panels. It's the text up here. It's all the text that you see around. Uh, it requires a restart. It requires you to restart Photoshop to actually see it, but you change it to tiny and all of a sudden all this text gets much smaller. My eyesight's horrible. So I went in here and changed it to large, but again, it's one of those things. You'll still be able to see it. It'll just be a little bit smaller and they'll wonder, has it always been this way or and it's one of those things, unless you know where it is, you, you probably wouldn't know to go in there and change it. So as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, just some fun little tips, pranks, tricks. I bet you, you learned a couple of things that maybe you can use. Maybe you just use them as a prank, but in the, uh, in the times that we're in right now, I know we could all use a laugh. So hopefully, uh, hopefully these little tips and pranks and things help brighten your day.